Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another speed build for the Disney save. Today I am going to be doing probably the longest speed build I have ever put out on my channel. This video came out to be well over an hour long, so if you like my longer speed builds, today is definitely a treat. Grab a snack, sit down, make yourself comfortable. I have a lot of updating and news to talk about as well as the absolutely massive build that I'll be working on in today's video which is Mount Olympus from Hercules. This is the final build for Hercules for Tartosa. I did save this till last because I just knew that this was going to be a monster of a build. I knew I wanted to have some really unique elements to the build, including having it floating if we could. And it's also going to house a very, very large full eight sim household. So there had to be, at least it comes out to about seven bedrooms because Zeus and Hera are going Going to share a bedroom and I really wanted to include lots of details from some of like the Greek myths inside of their rooms, really personalize those spaces as well as all of like the floating mechanics and just trying to make the space really function despite the game limitations and like the four level issue that we have with the game. I hope you enjoy the end result. It is one of my favorite builds that I have done in a long time. I felt that way about a lot of the Hercules builds like I keep saying Saying, this is my new favorite but I've just been so happy with how they've been turning out and I'm such a huge fan of Hercules so having these builds finally be a part of the save is kind of a full circle moment for me just because I've been thinking about these builds since the early days of the save file particularly this one because I'm such a huge fan of Greek mythology and I really really was excited to bring the Greek gods to life in the save and include their characters it's something that I always knew would be a part of the save and when I was working on this, as much as like this was really fun, it was a huge build so I knew it was going to be a little bit daunting and take me a really long time. But the prize at the end of doing this was really creating the gods, which was what I was most excited for. I have done a lot of gods. I did eight sims that fills out this household. I did originally plan for this to be big enough to use as a rental. And then the plan was to have like the upper gods be one of the rentals with eight sims and then the lower gods would be another rental with slightly less sims. I think it came out to six or seven. But the problem quickly arose when trying to make this place float. There was an immediate issue with space just because the game counts that bottom floor like that floating portion underneath the build as one platform and then another one of them is hidden inside the rocks and then I only had two to build on on top of the upper foundation levels if that makes sense. So I couldn't make it as tall as I wanted and really feel like as grand as I wanted it to be, but I was really stuck on making sure that it was floating. I think it makes it so unique. It's one of the only times that I'll get to do something like this in the save file as far as I can really think of, and it just helps it feel more like Olympus, despite the fact that I'm not going to be able to do like something exactly like what is shown in the film. In the film, Olympus is sort of like completely made of clouds. It has this orangey glowing look to it. It has waterfalls that are dripping down from the clouds. And when you do get to see scenes from there, it's obvious that a lot of the architecture and the building structures themselves are probably more so made out of clouds. There's only one instance where you really get to see that that is the case, but I, I believe it's baby Hercules that potentially breaks like a column in the little nursery party area that they are celebrating his birth. And it quickly gets remade by clouds. So the entire structure is really just made of like cloud and I knew that that was not going to be something that was totally possible so rather than trying to lean into what that looks like aesthetically I tried to borrow some of the shapes of the buildings and the structure and the floating aspect and then make it look more like a realistic quote-unquote Olympus so more just sticking with general Greek architecture some of the similar colors and like the roofing and trying to just give lots of space for all of the gods lots of garden areas and lots of community living spaces, lounging areas, party areas, the kinds of things that you would really think of when you think of these characters. So today's build will really not be like a true recreation from the film as I typically do. This is more like my twist on Olympus and a, a version that I feel like will work well for playability in The Sims, but I hope you still like it. It really truly did come out like even better than I expected and on the overall
overhead world map. It just stands out. It's so, I'm like so excited for when people download this world and I make Tartosa available and them getting to see it for the first time and getting really excited about it. It's such a really neat treat to have it floating. Now, one thing that I did implement is my thought was most of these Sims that live here and most of the Sims that you would want to come here, like Olympus is supposed to be a space that is really hard to get to and a lot of people are not allowed to go there. So you don't really want the welcome wagon. You don't want Sims kind of rolling up and there are some lot traits that you can use to stop that. But other than that, you also like won't have a ton of Sims coming here that aren't already magical. There are the Sims that live here. There's going to be a townie household with those lower gods that didn't end up fitting into the build. I was originally planning to make this a rental, but because of the way that it was designed, I didn't have enough space to do as many bedrooms as I would have liked. I ended up doing seven bedrooms and I would have essentially needed to do at least six more. There wasn't enough space. So the idea of using the rental, I got rid of it. But also I'm not really implementing rentals in the safe right now just because of how many issues the game has been having with them. And I've heard some really bad horror stories of people losing like legendary save files because of for rent and implementing the rentals. So as of right now, I'm just not using the lot type. I would like to in the future and I've expressed this a lot. There are lots of other builds already in the save that would work really well with this concept as well as some that I plan to do in the future. So I want to use it, but I'm just not doing it right now because it doesn't feel safe to do so. So we have the build. It's got seven rooms. All of the eight Sims that live here are occult Sims that can use magic. They're all going to be primarily spellcasters. There are some that are exceptions to that. But my thought was because they're spellcasters, most of them will be able to have teleporting features. They either can use teleportation magic or they'll have like a broom or they will have something along those lines to be able to just teleport themselves to Olympus. So the issue of it not being on the ground floor is basically solved. And then anybody that shouldn't be here really won't be like a spellcaster very likely. So other spellcasters could get here potentially, but if you don't have that teleportation, you're not likely to have to go here in the first place. However, there are kind of exceptions to that. So there is one in the main household that will not be a spellcaster and there is also Hercules himself who I did not make a spellcaster as well as the muses and I explained in their creative some videos kind of why I didn't do that but I still wanted them all to be able to come here for various obvious reasons so there needed to be a different system for sims to get up to the lot so I finally remembered that we have in the debug catalog the portals from the spellcaster pack there are entry and exit portals and they're labeled like one entry one and exit one and your sims can use them to just do teleportation even if they don't have magic. So the one that is the entrance is on the ground floor of the build and then the exit is up by the pond on this build on Olympus. So if your sim does not have the ability to use magic and teleportation, they can still get here if you really needed them to and for whatever gameplay that you may need that for as well. It's sort of like a backup system if for some reason you want to play through a storyline where you need a certain sim that does not have magical ability to be able to get up here. Or if your teleportation is like not working spellcasters, regardless, your regular sims will still be able to use this lot if you want to. I've hidden it on the ground floor, like under a tunnel and put a whole pond and an outdoor sort of garden area on the ground floor. That wasn't a part of today's video because obviously it's getting, it's going to be very long today. So I just didn't want to include like very basic landscaping and creating like a pond down there. It wasn't super necessary, but it is down there. It's hidden in like the tunnel there's a pond and you could have it be sort of like your sim is discovering the portal to Olympus also you could like play through that storyline. Now for the sims that will be living here we have Zeus and Hera and then we have Aphrodite. She's the first bedroom that I started with. She is the goddess of love. She obviously is very hand in hand with like hearts pink. She's known for some statues that show her with like seashells. I do think of her as very flirtatious, very like she would probably enjoy very much lounging in her room. She would like a very 
cluttered, sort of very overly girly kind of space. Lots of greenery, candles, makeup, jewelry, fashion, that sort of like a super ultra girly girl. And I wanted a space for her that just like totally embodied her character and what like the vibes that she gives. All of them get spaces like this. They're very heavily color coded, more so than I normally would do. Like think of the Toy Story apartments, how those feel just like very themed and almost like theatrical in a way. They're so heavily coded towards the character that actually lives in the room that there's no mistaking who it belongs to. Like right down to I hid little features inside of her bedroom. Like uh, we have, I think it's in the basement clutter kit or whatever kit that is that comes with like trash that you leave in your basement. One of the things that they put in that pack is a disassembled love bed, that heart-shaped bed from the earlier Sims games, which we've all as a community been begging for them to give back and would have been like really perfect for this room, by the way. But they did give us that version where it is taken apart and leaning against a wall. And I just thought if there was ever a space to use that, this would be the space. Like having it tucked kind of in the back corner against a wall somewhere in here, like it was her old bed and now she's like upgraded to a new one. It really screams her vibe overall. They each have very awkwardly shaped bedrooms because I had to build the floating structure. And then there was like rocks that were kind of morphed into the walls to create that downstairs area. So I had to work within like this very awkward shape just to keep it from clipping into these rocks. So every one of the bedrooms is like very oddly shaped. Nothing is perfect, almost like it's built into the mountainside, which again, kind of intentional, but it made decorating like really odd, trying to figure out how to use the space and some of them being much, much larger than others, including Aphrodite's. To fill it up and make it feel really unique and have every one of them be more of an experience and less so just like a bedroom and a dresser, like really themed. I wanted to use platforms. I wanted to have like lots of little features that I felt like made sense for the person that was living there. So she has her own private bathtub up on the platform with the archways where she can sort of like look out on the mountain. She also has a platform in her room that has some fountains and some statues. Maybe they're in reference to her. I feel like she could have like some conceited or like narcissistic characteristics. Maybe not too much. It depends on how you play her, but she kind of gives that vibe as well. It could also just be that she is a little bit more like she likes to take care of herself. She cares a little bit how she looks. She likes her skincare routine. She likes um, having her space be like really very much her. Lots of statues, lots of candles, like things that make her feel cozy kind of around her room. Whereas some of the other bedrooms are less personal, like Aries, for example. I feel like he would build a room out of necessity. Like he knows he has to sleep. He knows that he needs a bed. He probably needs a bookcase, but he's not like excited about his bedroom and decorating and things like that. It would just sort of be functional. Like I mentioned to you guys a few videos ago, and one of the reasons why this video took so long to put out is because I was in the middle of taking a trip to France between filming this. I had gotten pretty much to, I finished Aphrodite's bedroom and I had finished Hephaestus's room and then I went to Paris for about a week. So we went to Disneyland Paris. I had gone last year around this time and I have to say like the whole thing was a really, really great experience. It's always nice to be able to go to like a Disney park. I was excited, but it was so cold this time. And I know I talked about this in the last video, so I'm kind of like eating my words in a sense. I mentioned that I really enjoy being able to go to a Disney park and not be completely taken over by like the Florida weather. I don't like heat very much and I would rather like be cozy in a sweatshirt, that kind of a thing. But it was so cold and raining. It rained almost the entire time we were there. Not so much in Disneyland. We went to Disneyland first for, I think, Two, three days and then we actually stayed in Paris for my first time ever and explored Paris for about four days and it rained almost the whole time except for like I would say the first day we got there was kind of fine but we got there pretty late and then we went to Disneyland we just basically got dinner that first night ate at Pim's Kitchen which is a really really cool experience if you've never gotten to go it is a buffet and it's based after Ant-Man, Hank Pym, Pym Particles so the 
idea is that all of the food in there is either really big or really small, more so than it normally would be. So they have like giant cheeseburgers that they slice into pieces and they have giant pasta noodles and then they take other things and they shrink them down. It's a good restaurant. I've eaten there before and it's one of the ones that I prefer at Disneyland Paris. I have to say the last time I went, I loved Disneyland Paris, but I was so, so disappointed by the food and very underwhelmed and was borderline like starving, like just trying to find something to eat that I was excited about. It was just not a great experience with food. But this time when I went, it was so much different. I ate so good. There were so many really nice treats and food and everything I ate was like exceptional. I don't know if it's because they got rid of the 30th anniversary. Like the last time I went, they were celebrating their 30th anniversary. This time that was done and over with. So they had removed like some of the statues regarding the anniversary. All of the merchandise was gone and had been changed over to new Disneyland Paris merchandise. Some of the food and shows were different. It was just like a different experience overall, which is nice, but it was better now that the 30th anniversary wasn't going. There were things that weren't as good. Like the shows were definitely not as good as they were last time, but the food and the merchandise was really good. I found a lot of really cute things to buy. I am an ears fanatic as anyone probably could have guessed. I have way, way, way too many to the point where I, I have so many pairs that I've never even worn to a Disney park. I just like, I do collect them, but I have too many. And I said I wasn't going to buy ears when I was there because I didn't think I'd find any. Last time I had gone, I didn't find any that I liked. I wanted some that just said Disneyland Paris on them, but the quality seemed pretty poor compared to some of the ones you get in the other parks. And this time was so different. They had princess ears for each of the princesses that were really heavily themed and had jewels on them and glitter and they were really nicely done and they said Disneyland Paris on the side. It was such a temptation like not to pick up multiple pairs. I bought a lot more than I should have to be fair and it was just a better experience for merchandising for food. The shows were different. They canceled a lot of the shows they were running during the 30th and it was such a shame because I really hyped up how good the shows were last time I spoke to you guys but it was just not the same this time. All the good ones were gone and they weren't doing as many of their drone shows like they didn't do the Marvel drone show and it was just it's a little bit of a letdown in comparison. The park was also under major renovation. It has been for a while because they are adding like an Arendelle Frozen Land but they are also I think trying to renovate and prepare for the Olympics and probably the influx of people that will be coming because of the Olympics. So they just had everything under construction and a lot of stuff was going down pretty frequently. I would say I probably don't need to go back for a while like Ryan and I felt very content that we have done Disneyland Paris twice in the last two years and we probably don't need to go back for a long time because it just didn't have that same like really awe experience as it did the first time. I think we went back maybe a little bit too soon. The bedroom I'm currently working on right next to Aphrodite's is Hephaestus. He is the god of many things but when I think about him I think about like blacksmithing, forgery, the great forge and I wanted his room to be very kind of dark and worksman craftsmanship like he's got the woodworking table in here. He has that grill that to me looks like it could double as like a blacksmithing table. He also has like the more standard cauldron, the fireplaces, some wine. He's got that like dark cave vibe sort of bedroom and I also thought very much of like animal fur, hunting, so he's got like animal skin rugs on the floor. Not too much in terms of decorations but there is one little tribute to Pandora's box. There's like a tiny decorated box next to his bed which he is a part of that myth. So there are some neat little things in his bedroom. I really was focused on like doing the Great Forge and having him have this really grand like fireplace sort of area as well as like lots of cooking areas and the cauldron. I wanted everything in the room to feel like handmade. Like it could have been something that he had created. He is very much known as the character, the person that would like make weapons, make armor, make things for some of the other gods and boxes, crates, those sort of things. So everything in here could have been crafted by him. It's also in really heavy contrast to Aphrodite's space, like pretty much completely opposite and they are married. So that's the version that I am going with for mine. I don't think I'm going to get too much into the family tree that I've chosen to go for for in this video because we do have the creative sim coming up and I will be explaining how I unwound the family tree a little bit better in those videos I think. Basically to give the tiniest sneak peek 
I just wanted to make it so that it was like Disneyified and a little bit more family friendly. So whereas all of these characters in the Greek myths are related in some regard and most of them are siblings or children of Zeus, I had to unwind some of them in the best way that I thought would be possible, usually based on who had potential to have romantic relationships with whom. So it's very well known that Hephaestus are either together, engaged, married, different versions of the story. She also has other people that she is interested in, which could create some drama inside the household. She is going to be married to him in my version and basically like little changes, just like making not related to some of the other characters so that that is sort of unwound. There are a couple that are still going to be like siblings related, um, just depending on how it lays out. It gives Hercules lots of siblings as well. And then there are some that I just had to remove completely from the family tree. So they're just kind of like third parties in the situation. I tried to use archways in any of the spaces in many areas, like as much as I possibly could. The idea is less so that they'll be able to use them as doors because that area and the platforms outside of each of the bedrooms is not really functional. It has the rocks there and I don't really intend for your Sims to be able to like walk out there. I think they'd be able to in certain areas like in Hephaestus's room possibly, but that wasn't really the point. It's more so just serving as windows so that these spaces downstairs in like a essentially the basement level of the build, even though it's floating in the air, there it is technically like built into the rocks. It makes it feel more light and airy. It brings some of that natural light in and like that Greek architecture where you feel like a lot of the spaces would be more open, just kind of carrying that idea in as well. That's why there's a big arch behind Aphrodite's bed as well as around her bathtub. The idea is less so that it's like doors and that Sims could go out there and get around to each other's bedrooms and more so that it's just giving natural light and having it be a place where you could have sunlight come into each of the bedrooms. I did think of each one of these spaces as less like a traditional bedroom and more like a portal of something that each god has created. Like I can't imagine the gods standing around decorating their spaces like this is some big mansion and they had like a staff that went around and decorated. That's not really like my headcanon. It's more so like they've each created a portal to a world where it's completely their own. So everything inside of it is their own design and they can kind of just like move things around and poof things into existence as they would like. After we spent about three days in Disneyland Paris, I did get to go to Paris for the first time. We stayed right in central Paris for four days, three nights, I believe. It was a really, really great time. Basically, my husband was really great and right around Valentine's Day, he said, just pick somewhere that you want to go and we'll go. And to be honest with you, my first choice probably would have been Iceland. I think it would have been so nice to go, especially this time of year. And one thing that I really do miss about living in London is the snow. I think about it all the time. I'm from the East Coast of the US. We have tons of snow every year and less so in more recent years, but it's something that I like truly, truly miss from home. I love the ambiance that it gives. I love like the peacefulness it brings. I love how it just makes everything look. It's something very nostalgic for me and you don't get any of it here in London. We had one single day where I could see like just enough snow building up on the tops of cars and it was gone within a few hours. Like it's kind of heartbreaking to me in a way. So I really miss it. I would love to go somewhere a little bit icy and snowy. Um, Iceland would have been a good fit like around this time of year I feel but we couldn't go because Iceland is experiencing volcanic eruptions that are really displacing the population there. It's not safe to go. Um, I've been keeping kind of a close eye on it because it's really, it's it's interesting to me, but it's also sort of devastating. It's just something that's on my radar. So as much as that would have been really nice, I obviously didn't want to make that decision right now. So we chose France instead, something a little bit closer and someplace I also have not been that I feel like it makes sense to go this time of year. However, one thing that we really really did not consider a really truly big mistake that I knew about but like didn't consider when making this choice of where to go in the world is that Paris is hosting the Olympics this year which is great but it meant that everything in Paris is being renovated and under construction and I didn't really consider how long that would take and how much effort goes into that but they are really trying to clean Paris up right now they had basically like everything we planned to go do was renovated or 
missing or like even going to like the Medici fountain was something I was personally very excited to do. Just a quick little thing like pop into the garden, see the fountain. I was excited but it's completely drained right now. They're cleaning it. Then we went to the Eiffel Tower one day. It was completely gated off and closed. We found out later that that was less so because of the Olympics and more because of a protest but it wasn't a surprise at that point. That was one of the very last things that we did in Paris. Literally, I, I, I promise every single thing I had planned to go do. I had this whole thing planned out. I had researched and like really mapped out like the best way to get around and like try to do everything by condensed areas. And I had spent so much time checking and looking at things and really planning out like a good trip. But what I didn't do is think about the fact that the Olympics is coming and they were setting up like stadiums, lighting, platforms, places for people to sit. So you couldn't get inside of or near most of the monuments right now, which meant that I didn't didn't have as much to do as I thought it would have because we would get there, realize we couldn't really go inside or couldn't go near it, kind of just leisure and walk around, take some photos, really like take it in but like not be able to go inside or like participate. And then we were like, oh, what do we go do? So I guess we would go eat and the food was phenomenal. I was so excited about the food. Like one of the very first things I had was hot chocolate. It was the best hot chocolate of my entire life. I didn't think it would be as good as people said it was, but it truly, truly was. And then I had so many good sandwiches, pizza, French food, everything I tasted was peak cuisine. I was very happy overall with the food. I am a little bit of a foodie. I love cooking personally and I am kind of a food snob because I'm from New York so we just have like a really big variety. I'm used to very flavorful sort of food. That's been something that's really tough here in the UK for me. There is such a difference in terms of like food spice heat levels with the food so going to Paris was really refreshing. It was very good overall. I got some photos. I did get to see the Eiffel Tower. The hotel that we stayed in was very, very nice. They were super accommodating. I don't speak French. The language barrier was not too much of a problem overall. I would say the toughest part was the first time trying to use their underground system and figuring out how to get around and like buying a general ticket and things like that. I had researched a little bit, but like actually getting there and being inside for the first time and like looking around, you get a little nervous. You're like, I want to do this right. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to buy the wrong ticket. And it can be nerve wracking, especially like not that they would accommodate to English speakers in any regard because I don't expect that, but they definitely like don't. There's certain places where you have to just truly try to figure it out. And I have like little translating things on my phone, but it, it didn't really help. The first time Ryan and I went into the underground, we almost gave up because we just could not figure out the system. And then I was really stubborn and kind of like stood there and thought about it. And I'm used to the London underground at this point and there are enough similar that I figured it out. And then once we caught it down once, we were like, this is super easy, no problem, could get around anywhere in Paris. So next time I go, I feel like I'll be a lot better off. Besides that, it did rain pretty much the entire time we were there. So every time we did go somewhere that was open and we were like happy to be out and about, it was pouring down rain sideways. So a couple times we did have to go back to the hotel a little early. I'd give it like a good like eight out of 10 experience though. I'd love to go back. We went to the Louvre. It was absolutely awe-inspiring stuff stunning, breathtaking. The Venus de Milo in particular, just I absolutely loved the Louvre. I could stay there literally all day. I'd love to go back and I definitely will go back to France now that I didn't get to experience a lot of the things like truly for what they are, but probably not for a while. There are some other places I'd like to go first. The darker blue bedroom next to Hephaestus is Athena's bedroom. She is the goddess of wisdom. She gives the overall, like she's one of Zeus's favorite children. It's really important to note that there are many different versions of each Greek myth. So if I say something and you're like, that's not exactly correct, it might just be that it's like a different version of the same story. There are lots of versions of all of these stories and different little like details that are changed here and there. Just to throw that out there before anybody gets super mad at me, but she is in some versions of the Greek stories, a child of Zeus that he kind of created out of his own vision. She is supposed to be like really great at like, like war strategy. She's super athletic. She's very strong. She's very smart, forward thinking. She's got a lot of like versatility in terms of hobbies. She's like an overachiever. She's wise. She is a like diverse figure. I think of her as somebody that would be a complete hobbyist. Like she would just be good at a little bit of everything. She could garden. She could do sports. She loves to read. She can paint. She's musically inclined. I also think that she would be probably one of the strongest stronger 
stronger magic users in the household and one of the stronger spellcasters in general. So decorating her space with the spellcaster furniture and then having like lots of books and things to become more knowledgeable around the space. Like I could picture her sitting in here and reading so many different topics, interested in the stars, interested in the arts, painting, things like that. She would have like a little easel. So she's a very, very diverse person and I feel like she would be good at literally everything. I wanted to have like lots of little collectibles around and things that she'd be interested in. And then also like lots of magic items. Something that's really cool about her character is in the Hercules film, she is shown with an owl, like a little owl familiar. And that is an icon that she is very commonly associated with. So as well as tucking some owl memorabilia into her bedroom here and there, I'm also going to be giving her the owl familiar that is an option for spellcasters. I do not use familiars too often because I want them to be kind of special. The Enchantress has her cats and I believe some of them are familiars. And then Mama Odie also has one and Maleficent has one. They each are using a different one right now and I think it would be really cool to just minimize the use of the familiars and really give like one of each type to a different spellcaster somewhere in the save. So Athena will be receiving the one that looks like a blue owl, which is just perfect for her in my opinion. She is going to be a daughter of Zeus, but not a daughter of Hera. She will just be related to him, mother unknown. The next bedroom is the one I probably struggled with the most in this space, and it is Hermes. He is the god of travel. He is also the god of like travelers in general. He is also often depicted as like the male guy. This is something that they do in Percy Jackson, like he delivers mail to Olympus, but they do have remnants of this inside of Hercules as well. He's well cultured. He goes all over the world. He would probably have lots of collectibles from different cultures and lots of like prized items from different locations all over the world, but he's also airy and light. He's got clouds all over the place. He can fly and like float with his little shoes. He has that like cloud flight winged essence to him. So I do think of the sky and I wanted his room to feel the same way, light and airy with little clouds all over the place. Maybe some references to birds as well and feathers. He's got like a little feather collection on the wall. I always forget that these are in the debug catalog. They show up as little like feathers that you could place like on a table. But when you actually place them, they place as wall items because they're collectible and they're sort of like framed feathers. So he has some of those in his space. I also think of him as very energetic and sort of charismatic, but just has like a lot of that high potent energy. I think he would like some spaces to exercise and practice flight of some kind. I also think I'm going to give him the potential ability to use a broom. This isn't something that I use too often with my spellcasters, mostly because it's not just normally shown in Disney media. Like brooms are sort of ignored amongst magic users unless they're depicted as like a very, very traditional traditional witch. So I just don't use them. I usually use them as like decor, but I think for him, having him have something that he can use in like a flight mechanic is kind of his character and it makes a lot more sense. So I think he will be having the ability to use that. What made his space so difficult to decorate compared to the others, I think one was the size of this room. He has a very large room comparable to like Aphrodite. It's almost too much space for him. I probably could have used a little bit more of the room next door, which will be Poseidon, just to give him more space. But once I had dedicated like how the rooms were going to lay out and how they sat into the mountain, I was really kind of stuck on it. I didn't want to make too many changes. It was almost like a challenge for myself because the rooms were so awkwardly shaped and had weird sideways walls. Like I really wanted to challenge my decorating abilities and see if I could get things to fit inside these very awkward spaces somewhat cohesively and super usefully. I should mention, by the way, when we were doing Athena's room, I tried in the middle of that room to do a platform with like a globe and an arrow on it. There is this one particular statue that I really wanted to use in like the a platformed area in the center of that space. And you saw me doing it and it kind of like took over the entire room and it was too much in the space. Like that's what I mean. I, I was trying to really figure out how to balance everything in each of these spaces. I wanted a lot of them to have dimension with platforming. I wanted them to have archway so they had that natural light coming in, but they're all a little bit awkward 
awkwardly shaped so getting their like general living stuff to fit in a way that makes sense was sometimes challenging and for some reason Hermes room was equally so open and I just really didn't know what stuff to use. I knew I wanted like feathers and birds and lighter blue and cloud kind of colored and shaped items, maybe some little suns here and there, but there wasn't a lot of stuff in the catalog to be doing stuff like that. And it felt like it wasn't enough compared to some of the other characters. Like I want each of these rooms to really scream exactly who it is for. And that meant over theming them when I didn't quite have enough stuff for Hermes to be able to do so. I think if you look at this build, Build, his room might be the only one where you're not quite sure who it belongs to if you don't really really think about it or just like upon first glance but it did turn out to be my favorite. I love how open it is. I love the mismatch of furniture with like some of the different shades of blue and I popped in some of those like cloud ottomans and the weird little ram ottomans and I like the globes around. I like that he has collectibles from the world like I gave him one dresser that is just cluttered with all sorts of cultural things and some paintings and stuff but he doesn't have too much. It feels like maybe he's not here all the time like he travels so much that this space to him is not super personal because he's not here very often. It just feels like a space that he uses to keep some of his stuff but also he does have to have like a space inside Olympus. You will also see me throughout the video going back and forth to some of these bedrooms as I find things in the catalog that make sense and go back and just like put them in the room real quick. It's getting to the point where it's really difficult to remember everything that we have available and so sometimes I just forget things and I hate that feeling that there's an item that was perfect for a space and for some reason I just didn't see it or I forgot to use it and it's sitting there like waiting for me to add in and I just didn't remember or it just never happens which I'm sure is the case but I really wanted it to be I wanted these rooms to be very themed and very like perfect in a sense so I'm adding little things here and there throughout the video going back and forth trying to make sure as I see new clutter pieces and new items that are perfect I put them back into the rooms. The bedrooms do take up the majority of today's video they were just so really unique and fun so I wanted to really focus on them but I did show a lot of the decorating upstairs as well which is why this video is so long. All of the gods except for Zeus and Hera each have their own bedroom. Zeus and Hera live together in one space upstairs in one of the bigger buildings. There is also a giant communal dining space and gallery where all of them, not just these guys but the lower gods that I'll be creating for the townie household, could all come here, meet, talk, fight, whatever you want to do. There is a huge kitchen, a wine cellar, several garden spaces, a library, a bathhouse and lounging area. So there was lots and lots to decorate and show you guys. There's also like very little of this place shown in the film but the one thing that they did show was the nursery scene where Hercules is born and they have all the gods there celebrating his birth and the only things they really show in that space are like his bassinet and maybe some gifts that they brought for him as tribute. So I wanted to recreate that space somewhere here just because it is the only one that gets shown and it's kind of of important in that regard. Hermes is a character that is unrelated to the other household members as well as Aphrodite. I think they are the only two in this household that have no relation to anyone else. I chose to remove Hermes because he feels like the most distant from them all. Like I could get away with just plucking him out of the family and it wouldn't make too much of a difference. The other thing is there's some versions of Greek stories where Aphrodite and Hermes have a relationship so I wanted them to be separated as well and it just made sense overall. I tried to think about like potential romantic partners when trying to do the tree. That won't be perfect especially because there's different versions of each story so there could be some where like certain characters do end up together and I didn't want to like worry about that too much but if I did already have that prior knowledge then it made sense for me to unwind it that way. Zeus's other brother Poseidon gets the next bedroom. He is the only member of the household that will not be a spellcaster. He will be a mermaid. Even even though it would be really nice to give him more powers and have him be a spellcaster where he could have like more traditional magic, ignoring that he is the god of the sea and not making him the literal god of the sea, like doing a mermaid would be kind of weird in my opinion. So he is the only mermaid. I wanted him to have his own private pool space. I was able to make it so that he did have his own pool in his room. 
and there is no foundation underneath that pool. I've used a debug foundation that makes it look like the foundation disappears from your build. So even though there is technically like the game thinks there's a foundation under that pool that connects it all the way to the ground level, it's disappeared in my version of the build so that it looks like it's floating along with the rest of the build. I also built a custom fish tank into his bedroom. I'm going to have to play test that a little bit, but that's something I've seen in like YouTube shorts and other creators that are very talented came up with this way that you can make a giant fish tank built into the wall and it's by sizing down some of the fish tanks we already have in game and then sort of cluttering it up around that area with some of the rocks and greenery and little algae looking plants and coral and then the game should still spawn fish because it thinks there's a fish tank there so you should get some fish kind of swimming around behind that wall. I will play test it to make sure that it looks correct and that the fish aren't coming through the wall. I can also make it a little bit bigger. There is a little bit more room to kind of bump it out into the cliff side there so that could potentially help as well but I've never done that before and I thought this would be one of the very first builds and a really good build at that to try it out. He definitely has to have like some fish and some greenery and some like underwater feel in his room. Similar vibes to when I did King Triton's castle and we had all of the girls bedrooms for the different mermaids. I really thought about like what's underwater, what doesn't make sense. Like I didn't want to have too many things in here that are more on the human side. Like it's more greenery, more plants, more nature looking than some of the other bedrooms. But he does have bookcases. He does like, I don't think that this bedroom is meant to feel like it's underwater. Whereas in King Triton's castle, I did want it to be underwater vibes. This is meant to be in touch with nature and have lots of tributes to the ocean and water, but it still has a fully functional pool in the space and that built in fish tank. So it's not underwater, it just gives the vibes of it. Hades has been in the save file for a very long time because he lives in the underworld, which is located below Bald Mountain in Forgotten Hollow. So he already is in the game and when I do update my version of the save for Tartosa, I'll make sure to link the three brothers together as siblings so you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. I'm also going to be updating the Hercules Club. That Hercules Club has existed since early days of the save as well because of the fact that we did do some of the Hercules characters. The fates are also in the save and they are some of the characters that work alongside Hades. There won't be enough room to like put all of the characters in. We have a ton of Hercules characters at this point but I will be doing Greek god clubs as well like probably an upper and lower house and then have the two clubs be friends of one another so that you can easily gather them here. It makes sense that this would be like the club hangout spot so we'll have this be the spot for both of those clubs. The main Hercules club will potentially be the mansion because that will include like Phil, Hercules, Meg, Hades because he's a really big character in the film and then Zeus like characters that are important to the film whereas these guys are sort of like background characters. A lot of them don't even have lines and the only familiarity that you would have potentially with some of these characters is if you watch the Hercules TV show. A lot of them get shown in a lot more depth so they are not like main Hercules characters so they won't be a part of the club but I will make like Greek god clubs so that it's still really easy to gather all of these guys into one space and have Olympus be their club hangout spot. Ares has a platform bed, he has a fireplace, he has a chess table for strategy and his room is a, a lot smaller than the other ones so I thought just about like practicality when creating his space. It also gives like low-key Fire Nation vibes. It's overwhelmingly sort of red. I think he would have a very obvious fiery but sort of like aloof personality. He would keep to himself a lot and he probably doesn't really like care to decorate his space. He's just got things in there that he needs and things to be comfortable and because he's such a like vivacious personality and really like the god of war you can think red and very bold and the black detailing and things like that. So it's a lot but it really fits the vibe of him. He is the last one that'll be living down here in this space and Ares is going to be kind of like Aphrodite's boyfriend. So she does have a husband and a boyfriend. Do with that what you will, or at least like a little bit of romance with both of them. Create some drama in a household that should have lots of drama anyway. He is also a full son of Zeus and Hera. So that makes him a full sibling of Hercules. Normally that does not work out to be the case, but because Disney depicted Hercules as Hera and Zeus's full child, then he does end up having some full siblings with some of the other gods, including Athena. Athena would be 
be like his half sister. She is a full daughter of Zeus. And there will be some other ones, I believe. Like I said, I'll explain it better in the creative sim video if you're not keeping full track of like how everything's working out. Now on to the rest of the build, the upstairs areas. So this upstairs like portion, this is basically the bulk of the rest of the build. There are a lot of really large spaces in here. And then there are a lot of floating columns around the build. Those are mostly just for decoration. I put some clouds underneath them and they have like some lighting and things in them, but I didn't really consider them to like fully decorate. I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted them just kind of like floating around to give more of that appeal of like the ethereal aspect of like floating and magic and having this be like a very unique sort of build. So those are around, but the main spaces include this upstairs portion. This is actually right above the bedrooms and right behind the fireplace is this staircase downstairs to get to those bedrooms. So this is the main hub of the build. I wanted a giant dining area in here with a massive dining table that would see all of the gods, including the upper and lower. That is the main household that lives here and the towny household. Obviously they could all come here for a meal, but I picture them more getting together here for little arguments and parties and things. Something that I really struggled with once I was done with the bedrooms is how to use color in the rest of the build. When you think of Greek mythology and just ancient Greece, this is something that I've talked about in lots of other videos, but you do tend to think of white marble. And a lot of the pieces we have that work for this build only come in white marble. That would be the romantic garden stuff. And it does have other color swatch options, but they're not really great. Like some of them are like bright blue or bright purple, and they weren't exactly the vibe I was looking for. But also the characters that live here are so colorful. They have so much like literal color to them in their design and the glow that they have, but also their personalities. And I wanted this to be like a combination of both things. So as much as it makes sense to do like pristine crystal, clean white everywhere and just have that be the only vibe for the rest of the build. And that would give the idea of like clouds again that I mentioned earlier in the video. Doing just white everywhere would have taken such an opportunity away from how much personality everyone who lives here has. So I did want there to be some color to like represent the little spurts of color that each of these characters really embodies. So there is primarily white and marble and lots of like that clean look to it, but then I wanted like pops of color here and there. So this as well as being the main dining hall, I turned it into a gallery. I think if the gods cared about anything, which I don't, to be fair, I don't think they really care about much. I think they would care about partying, lounging, arts, music, culture, and drinking. And that's pretty much about it. So if they were going to have a space to display sculptures and art and have like some of their favorite pieces lying around, doing this gallery right in like the central dining area in front of the grand fireplace to me made the most sense. There's also a library tucked into this area. It does have some little lounging spaces to sit and read a book, but I also think of it as just like a historical place for them. Like it's a place where they could go for information or maybe a lot of them have written their own stories and are sort of like storing them there. It's kind of like, like a database where they keep like all of their important spells, information, stories. I mentioned earlier Avatar The Last Airbender. It's on my mind recently because the Netflix show just came out and I've been really like recaptivated by the Avatar universe. It's all over my TikTok and I did finally get a chance to watch the Netflix show. I'm a huge, huge fan of Avatar. Like I think it is one of the greatest pieces of media that's ever been made. I've made builds a long time ago in The Sims that were all like different places in the Avatar universe. They're not that great in comparison to the, some of the stuff that I've done recently and I would definitely do them differently if I made them nowadays but I just absolutely love that universe. If I was going to make another save file I feel like that would be easily one of the top contenders but The Sims it just doesn't call for that universe like especially if you're doing like Aang era or anything earlier there's too much of The Sims that is way 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 too modern looking so it would probably be better to pick like maybe one world and theme it after Avatar and try to like fit a lot of stuff in like I don't know Windenburg just because it has like so many lots and there would be a lot of space but even Windenburg is like not the right vibes you know what I mean so in a perfect world if we could like create our own worlds again like we could in The Sims 3 I would so lean into doing something Avatar related that being said I saw the Netflix show my husband and I watched all of it back 
back to back and I really liked it. It's not perfect. There are a lot of like weird changes that they make that you're sitting there, if you're a big fan, you're like, why did they do that? It doesn't make a ton of sense. But I think that because, and I won't be talking about spoilers by the way, so don't worry about that if you have not finished the show. But I do think that because they weren't sure if they were getting season two and three and so they didn't know if they could do book two and three, they tried to throw as much of like the fan hype avatar stuff at you as quickly as possible. So they give you some of the things that you're not supposed to get in book one just to be able to cast those actors and have those little like story moments play out even though they are not in that book or they should have come like at a different point. They kind of like move the timeline around which I was not a big fan of. I wish that they had just stuck with what they were supposed to do which is redo book one in a live action format. But it was getting at least on my timelines on like Twitter and on TikTok a lot of hate and I'm very critical especially about things that are like my personal favorites. Like when I went to go see The Little Mermaid I walked in expecting that I was going to hate it because the animated version is one of my absolute favorites. So it's really hard for me to like accept a new version of that and so I just thought that it wasn't going to be something that was for me and everybody was kind of as far as I could tell not really liking it very much but I did like it. The special effects are really well done. The casting is really well done. Some of them are stronger than others but Zuko is like a spot-on cast. Sokka is a spot-on cast. You can even hear it in their voice sometimes like they're really throwing their voices to try to sound like the original voice actors and there's something kind of like cool about that. They're really like eyeing. There were multiple episodes where I cried. I think they do a really good job of establishing Iroh and Zuko's relationship. I do feel like they lack on establishing other relationships. Like they almost are entirely skipping over Katara and Aang's relationship. They do not even speak as often as they probably should. They don't really bend together. There's not like a ton of bonding moments between them. But in place of that, you get to see into Iroh's story a lot earlier. And I did cry multiple times. I'm really excited that it got greenlit for seasons two and three. I'm really hoping they take some of the criticism to heart and do better with what I feel like is lacking in the show. And I'm excited for it overall. It excited me so much that I've recently been reading the Avatar books. If you didn't know, as well as like comics, extended universe that go into the Avatar like show after the events of the last episode, there is all of that. But there are also more recently novels that have been written and they're about some of the previous avatars. The first two in the series are about Avatar Kyoshi and I've been reading those and they are phenomenal books. They are so well written, so interesting, really, really smooth reads. Like some of the best books I've written in a very long time. They kept me on edge. They were like, I always just appreciate a very well written story that's not too predictable and that I really wanna see what's going on. Like it keeps you moving, there's no like, like really dull moments and it's so interesting to see into like the early days of Avatar Kyoshi and how bad she had it off and how rough of a start she got because she is like one of Aang's predecessors so it's just like interesting to see what he went through in some of his past lives. The book is a little bit more gruesome than I think I expected like I don't think they were going for a super young audience when they were writing the book like there is some just straight up bad things that happen in it that I don't think would be depicted in an Avatar show because it's a little little bit above the radar of like a child which the original show was aimed at so I think it's more so for those like older Avatar fans like myself it's got a more mature tone to it. I ripped through the first book in two reading sessions and then I immediately bought all of the other ones. There was one more for Avatar Kyoshi, there are two for Avatar Yang Chen that come after that and then they are currently writing the Avatar Roku book that is supposed to come out this summer. I'm gonna read all of them, they are so so good. Let me know if you want to hear more thoughts on those. I know when I used to stream on Twitch, there were quite a lot of people that had crossover between really loving Disney and really loving Avatar. It's something that a lot of people that watch my content share in common. So if you've read the books, what did you think? If you've read, I have not read like the comics yet. So that is something else that I'd like to get to, but I think I'm going to go through the books first. I've also been reading the Bridgerton series. I read the first two and I was a little put off by the second one. So I'm taking a break for Avatar. I have all all of the Bridgerton books so I plan to finish them all. I'd really really like to read the next book before the season three of Bridgerton comes out even though the third book in the series is about um, different characters. It's not about Colin and Penelope so the, it doesn't completely line up but I wanted to be at least three books in before the new series comes out this summer so that's kind of like a 
a goal in the back of my head. But yeah, I didn't really love the second book, so I'm taking a break and Avatar has been really refreshing. Um, something else that's on my list is Dune. I rewatched the first Dune recently in preparation to go see the second Dune film. I loved them. I think that the second Dune film is truly, truly one of the greatest films that's ever been done. It was like mind-blowing how beautiful the movie was, how interesting the screenwriting, the everything about it. Like I could talk all day about Dune, but it's so niche, so I'm just gonna like skip it. I just wanted to mention that it's really, really good. It's as good as everybody says it is. If you haven't seen it yet, go and see it. If you like fantasy, if you like sci-fi, watch the first one first because it gives you way too much context. The second one probably wouldn't make any sense. Like I cannot even imagine going to see the second Dune film not having the context of the first one. There was so much to do between the two films that I didn't even know this, but the first book is the two films. So they had like literally just so much to go over and give you context for. And then the second one really gets into like the action and a little bit more of the story as well, but the true like events of what play out in the universe. And it convinced me that I absolutely need to read at least the first Dune book. It is a hefty 800 and some odd pages, but I read Midnight Sun last year, which is, it is a retelling of the first Twilight book from Edward's point of view. And it was also in the 800 page range, an absolutely massive honking book. And it was terrible. I finished it just out of like pride of wanting to complete it and say that I read it and I was done with it. So if I can read that, I feel like I'll be able to handle Dune. Doing the whole universe, that's a whole nother story. There are so many books. And from what I've seen on TikTok of people explaining, it's kind of like Star Wars where there is like a main storyline, but then there are lots of stories that are written by other authors that kind of branch out the universe here and there. And I think there's like over 20 books or something like that. So I don't know if I'll get into all of that, especially trying to get through Avatar, Bridgerton, and just at least the first Dune is like on my immediate reading radar in the next few months. One thing I want to mention about today's build that was included in the build is a really big bathroom space. Now, my plan for these characters is to give them so many bonus traits and reward traits that they basically won't really function like normal Sims. They will be super overpowered. There are so many traits you can give where Sims will basically never get dirty. They will never die. They really won't have to use the restroom very often. It makes them superhuman. And I did that with Hades. He functions in a way where like you don't have to focus on the needs aspect of these Sims. So you won't necessarily 100% need things like showers, bathtubs, the kitchen, but you could, I mean, if you wanted to focus on that stuff, you could. And I wanted that to still be available, especially for other Sims that may come here that won't be as buffed out with those reward traits like Hercules, who will still be receiving some, but not like all of those types of things to make them like completely overpowered. So there is a general, very large bathroom here that has has multiple bathroom stalls and I think one or two bathtubs. I wanted to include it, but I just also knew that it wasn't something that was going to be like a main priority for this build. I originally, you can see the bathhouse was created and it has the two hot tubs in there. Now that's not actually really what a bathhouse would look like. A pool would probably be a much better choice, but because of the way that this build is laid out. I couldn't do a pool on that particular spot. It would have cut right into Poseidon's bedroom. So I had to opt to use the hot tubs. And then right off of that, I originally built this like lounging seating room, which is what I'm currently building on screen. But it occurred to me that it made more sense that the bathroom area was off of the bathhouse. So I did change this. I kept the footage in so that you could see like how this space was decorated because I basically copy and pasted the space to a different room in the build. You can see at the screenshots at the end of the video kind of a little bit better of what I'm talking about, especially with like the layout and things. But it just didn't make sense for that seating room to be directly attached to the bathhouse. So I did move it. That means that the very bottom floor is all of the bedrooms. The floor above it has the library, the dining room, the kitchen, two gardens. It also has a wine cellar, I'm calling it, even though it's not located in the cellar. There's a little room tucked away that 
it is basically just to house nectar, which I'll be stocking that fully up. Any other items that sort of resemble the idea of that, lots of drinking and partying sort of things. The bathhouse is also on that floor, the lounging area, and the main bathroom. And then one floor up from that in the main building towards the back of the dining hall is Zeus and Hera's room. It's an absolutely massive, unlike the other rooms where we had this really awkward shape to decorate, this space is perfectly square and I wanted it to be more of those like traditional Greek vibes, very open to the elements, lots of archways, the clean white marble, but then some pops of gold and sun memorabilia here and there because it is Zeus's space. This is more like what I think would be like your traditional Olympus vibes if I had to guess what that would look like. There are some things in here that show you that it's also Hera's space as well, but it is very overwhelmingly Zeus as I think it probably would be. Even though they do share a space, I feel like Zeus just takes over every room that he walks into. He's got that total personality, so he is really the vibe of this room. I was surprised at the lack of like sun-themed items that we have. It was much easier to find things that just had gold accents to them and little gold pieces that I could sort of put around, but I really wanted like a big sun mantle over either the fireplace or the bed because that's just like, that's what you need for Zeus or lightning bolts of any kind, like anything that even came close to resembling that. I found some lights that are like jagged gold shards that is probably one of the closer things we have to like what maybe his lightning bolt would actually look like. So I did hang some of those on the walls. When I think of ancient Greece, I do think of greenery as well, but I didn't want to do like too much greenery here or really in the entire build. I wanted the gardens to sort of speak for themselves and have like those dedicated garden spaces without like doing an abundance of greenery inside the actual bedrooms and things. So there are little bits of it here and there, but I just didn't want it to completely take over the space. I think that is a route that you could have potentially gone when decorating an area like this, but it just wasn't my vibe that I was going for. Because Zeus's room room is so big, I wanted to break it up by putting a really large column in the center and having the fireplace sort of face the bed and then having that other side be like the living room. So it does break it up at least a little bit and without doing actual walls in here, have that feel more cohesive. Like one side of the room is actually for sleeping arrangements and then the other side has like a desk and living room space, maybe where they would have company sort of enter the room as well. Above this bedroom is the one of the larger main party garden areas. There's a full bar up there. I'll be decorating it in a few minutes in the video. There's also some greenery. It's like more of like the general party space. I think if they were going to host events or have like lots of them come together for some kind of event, that would be mostly the area they would hang out or maybe more so like the evening area after the dining in the main hall, they would go up there above Zeus and Hera's room. You could also have that function as more of like a private space that is just for Zeus and Hera. That's really grand. It's got the bar, but I did think of it more as like a communal area. As far as what is coming up in the next few videos, for the Disney save. We are done with Hercules in terms of builds. I do have two more Hercules videos coming out that will be all of the gods I've been mentioning, including the ones that live in this household, but then I'll also, I think it'll be a separate video, so it should be two, where I'll be doing another set of Sims that are all Greek gods. I've been calling them like the lower gods, and they are ones that you would like think of even less, but also very well known. That'll be really exciting. Those will be townies. There will be so many of them. It adds a ton of new spellcasters to the save. Something that I've been really debating and kind of talking about with my patrons is whether or not these guys should all have some sort of fame levels. I'd really love to hear more opinions on this. Um, I think my patrons are pretty much just as split as I am because this would be essentially adding 13 to 14 new very famous sims to the save. I feel like it's hard for me to like accept that many famous sims. They're also really distracting in gameplay just from testing. It causes like paparazzi and fans and and sims tend to act weird in front of them. And I also think that if you have too many famous sims, it can sometimes take away from like, the uniqueness aspect of having somebody be famous. Even though these guys are very well known and they are gods and people should really kind of know who they are and they have that like essence to them where they should be important, it could go really either way and I'm super torn about how to implement them in the save. So if you have any thoughts about that, please, please let me know. It's definitely very much appreciated. After those two households, we are done with Hercules for sure, for sure. And I'll be moving on to the next build, which will be a replacement lot for the wedding venue 
venue that I did. I will be creating one more wedding venue option. I think because this is the wedding world, ideally I would have had multiple wedding venues as lots in the world. But because there were so many really great ideas and things that didn't make it into the world, instead of doing two dedicated wedding venues, I thought it would be better to have a replacement lot options with a different wedding venue. So you still get two options, but they both go in the same location and they don't take up quite as much space. That'll be for, it's going to be Fantasia themed. Really exciting. We haven't really done a ton with Fantasia yet and it'll be the only Fantasia thing for this world. And then right away, I'll be moving into the lower building district of Tartosa. We've really been just building kind of towards the back of the map in the mountain areas and things. This will be more so the coastline with a completely different movie that some of you have most definitely already guessed in the comments, but I'm not going to reveal quite yet. Maybe towards the end of the Fantasia build soon to come. Things should be a little bit better on track as far as videos coming out as well. I have been delayed because of my trip to France, but also this build was just so massive. It probably took me somewhere close to 15, 16 hours plus just to do the build, let alone the editing and everything else. I'm really happy to have this behind me though. I have to play test it, which is going to be a whole nother nightmare. And I'd like to start getting some of the Hercules builds up on the gallery as well as the characters for you guys well before I'm ready to launch Tartosa. My only hesitation is that the game is in kind of a poor state right now. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of hot fixes and updates and every single time The Sims fixes whatever's going on, it's still broken and there's something else that's wrong and it's even worse than before. There's been a lot of corrupting save files and I haven't been in live mode in a long time and I'm kind of afraid to do so. I've been hesitating, but I'd like to hopefully get some of those things updated for you guys here very, very soon before we move on to the next few movies. But the state of the game also kind of scares me, so we'll see if that actually ends up happening. And with that being said, we are at the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Olympus and it lived up to everything that you thought it was going to be. If you would like to support the Disney Save on Patreon and get early access works in progress, get to see some of the things that are out way, way, way before I even have enough time to make a video out of it. All the Greek gods are already available so you can see them as well as be able to participate in my patron only discord where we discuss and plan the save and they really really help me like shape the save for what it is so if you want to be a part of that process consider supporting me on patreon it is linked in my description box down below or at the end of the video thank you guys so much for watching today and i will talk to you all in the next one